Hi folks, we're going to talk today about reforms that happened during the Industrial Revolution. Your goal for this screencast is to be able to explain multiple reasons for the rise of labor unions as well as some of the other positives that came out of the Industrial Revolution. So as you're watching along and taking notes, um, make sure to keep that in mind. We're going to start first though with some pictures. Uh, these are of working conditions and kind of the people who were working during the Industrial Revolution. So as you can see, there were a lot of young children working and a whole lot of exposed machinery where you could get hands and legs and arms caught and uh, not a whole lot of safety codes to make sure that the workers in these factories were safe during this time period. Also, there were no minimum age laws for how old you had to be when you were able to work. No idea how old this little kid is, but... Yeah, he's way younger than you are. So we're going to start with unions. And unions are voluntary labor organizations, and they band together and represent the workers in a trade. And unions came about to try to get better pay, but also better working conditions for workers during the Industrial Revolution. And if the demands of the unions weren't met, all members of that union would walk out of work and refuse to work and go, what's called, go on what is called a strike. With some pressure from businesses, governments tried to make law, the, the government tried to make laws that made unions illegal, um, but ultimately unions were declared legal by the U.S. and by other countries around the world. And unions initially formed for skilled workers, not for the people who were working in factories, but very quickly unions became uh, common even for people like factory workers and for jobs that didn't require a huge amount of education. There were also reform laws during the IR that initially focused on working conditions, and these, the focus of these laws were on women and children, and it tried to limit the places that these women and children could work, as well as the number of hours that women and children could work. Eventually, these reforms spread to everybody, but initially it started with um, trying to improve working conditions and pay for women and for smaller children. These reforms spread to other areas as well. Uh, slavery, women's rights, and education all saw reform movements during the Industrial Revolution. Some positives from the Industrial Revolution, there were huge numbers of jobs created for all the people who were forced to move to cities with the process of urbanization that went on. Nations that industrialized became incredibly, incredibly rich, but poorer nations were actually made poorer because of those natural resources were exported from their country and then developed into finished products in richer countries and resold to the poorer countries at a profit. The Industrial Revolution also pushed technological progress. It pushed innovation with the huge number of inventions that came about to make industrial processes easier. There's just this huge wave of, of innovation that went on during the Industrial Revolution. Eventually, better working conditions, or excuse me, better living conditions appear for people. Again, you know, the, the cities were these really crowded, really dirty slums for a long time. Eventually, better working conditions came about after horrific working conditions and no real regulations on it. And these reform movements that I mentioned before eventually bettered society. Just a giant effect of the Industrial Revolution is the growth of populations. Um, as you can see from this chart, Hugh, I mean the, the world population grows by 50%. The population of England almost triples. The productivity of the average farmer goes up by 50%. London, Manchester, and Glasgow all experience enormous growths in population. Life expectancy goes up. The transportation time goes down thanks to the invention of the steam engine and the train. Communication times go way down as well as the telegram is invented. 
the dominant nations of the world become England and Europe, uh, and environmental issues continue to be a problem, but they're kind of different sets of problems as the Industrial Revolution winds to a close. So, your goal for this was to be able to explain multiple reasons for the rise of labor unions, as well as some of the positives that came out of the IR. If you were able to do that, great. If not, go back and rewatch the screencast or check the pages in your textbook. Thanks.